All right, our guest today is Elliot Max and Joe Larson, father and son uh, comedians from right here in the Northwest. And how lucky are we to have these guys in? This is a special treat for us. You guys, welcome to the show. Thanks. thanks. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, well, uh, let's start with you, Elliot. Um, longtime comedian here in the Seattle area. And uh, like we mentioned earlier, winner of twice of the seattle comedy competition which i don't believe has ever been done it wasn't done since i don't think it's been done i don't think anybody's tried no i think people <laughs> have tried be, yeah. <laughs> there's, really, there's really no reason to right? and under two different names right, That's right. so uh, well tell us about your um your history as an individual in comedy when did you decide to go into comedy and how did you get to the point where you're at now where you're like the biggest name on cruise lines the big selling point for me was flunking out of college. <laughs> and right away I said, okay, I got to come up with something that doesn't require a degree. And this doesn't. Um, so uh, I started, God, what did I start? 1976 oh. was my first attempt at being a comedian. And I didn't actually get a laugh until 1979. <laughs> <laughs> I had heard about uh, <laughs> people doing stand-up comedy. They didn't really have comedy clubs. Then. Was this in Seattle? I was in Seattle. I was uh, well in Bellingham. Okay. And going to college, and I thought, well, I've got to figure out where they have stand-up comedy. And I yeah, Where are they doing it back then? Uh, San Francisco and L.A. and New York were about the only places doing stand-up. And so I went to San Francisco to work at either the Purple Onion or the Hungry Eye, which I'd seen on the back of albums, big clubs. I get down there, the Purple Onion was closed, and the Hungry <laughs> Hungry Eye was a strip bar. <laughs> so, Not a bad place to work. There was nowhere to work. I just happened to stumble across a little open mic and uh, that was doing you know, amateur stand-up. Right. So I go in. I sit down at the bar. I say, I want to be a comedian. They said, great, you're on next. And then <laughs> about a minute later, this guy walks in with an entourage. And it's obviously, he's big. I don't know who he is. And he says, oh, just a second. This guy's going on first, and then you're going on. The guy that was going on next was Robin Williams. No, no. <laughs> this is before he was famous, too. Right. And so he does about 20 minutes, and he literally, when he walks out the bar, everybody leaves with him. It's like they're just following him like a parade. <laughs> <laughs> There's two drunk people left in the bar, and they go, okay, you're on now. <laughs> so that was my debut. Well, I think um, they were following because he had cocaine in his pocket. Could have been. <laughs> probably, probably. Yeah. So, so you go down to San Francisco, and you're trying to do your thing, and then do you, you eventually come back to Seattle? Yeah, I, I uh, was down there for a while. I worked uh, in L.A., too, at the uh, comedy store down there for a, a little while, and and then uh, decided to move back up to Seattle, where they were just starting to do stand-up up here. So uh, I worked under my my real name, Gary Larson, for a while, mm -hmm. until uh, that guy from the far side came and took my name away. <laughs> um, <laughs> which I knew was going to happen. My first paid gig up here, uh, my parents took me to uh, a Chinese restaurant to have Chinese food afterwards. Mm -hmm. My fortune cookie. Now, this is my first paid gig as a performer. I open it up, and it says, your name will be famous in the future. <laughs> <laughs> and I saved that. I went, this is a sign. Yes. And sure enough, about four years later, my name got famous without me. Just not you behind it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And I just, I wanted to ask you, uh, I noticed um, that you have incorporated uh, music into your your act. You have a guitar up there with you, and yeah. you actually sing a few songs. And um, you became quite famous for one, the uh, Grandma's on Crack. Grandma's on Crack, big hit. Yes, um, that was a big, a big oh, hit. Yeah. And Joe was in that uh, video, weren't you? Like yeah, I played him as a kid. Yeah, you're yeah. like nine or something like that. that. Was great. And I'm just curious about: uh, Did you always have a love of music, or was this something that um, you decided to do to to be set apart and different from the other comedians that were up there? No, if I could have been anything, I would have been like. Like one of those lounge lizard guys, you know, with the big collar and hey, baby, um, I would have loved to do that. So that's the best show business in the world. You got to be, you know, as cool as you imagine yourself to be, right? You know, and uh, it, there was a problem of a lack of of talent mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that I really couldn't play or sing well enough to pull that off. And right. so this is a way of doing it. And in my head. 
you know, you see something and you guys are all laughing. You go, ah, that's really funny. And he doesn't sing or play very well. But in my head, I'm like, yeah, baby. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. that's the cool part. Yeah, there's a rule. If you're a bad musician, learn a joke. Yeah. Yes, exactly. All right. Well, let's talk to Joe for a moment here. And uh, Joe Larson is your son. And Joe has a, is following in your footsteps and quite successfully, I might add. And uh, Joe, tell us about growing up. In your in the shadow of, 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 of a big time comedian in Seattle, and uh, and then deciding I, this is what I want to do. Yeah, growing up in the shadow of Gary Larson, the cartoonist, was very difficult. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, it, it's, it, it was it was funny. I you know growing up with your father as a comedian, uh, he's full of crap. <laughs> but when you're a child, you don't know that he's full of crap. You right. think that he's all these things are true. So, I, from birth until five years old, I had no idea that my dad didn't know the answer to every question I ever had <laughs> until I went to school and they'd ask and I'd raise my hand and I had an answer for everything. And I think they had a meeting at one point and told my dad they couldn't talk to me. Um, <laughs> I, uh, but I, yeah, I went, oh, I started comedy. Um, when I was 20, I was uh, doing nothing. So <laughs> I was following in his footsteps there as well. Uh, <laughs> you yeah, fuck out of college. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Drove out of college. And uh, I, was, I, was, I moved back into my parents' house. I'd wanted to go on some fishing boat to Alaska, and that didn't pan out. And I was waking up at noon one day, and my dad goes, uh, you ever think about doing comedy? And I go, no. And uh, he goes, well, would you ever give it a try? And I go, I don't think so. And he goes, well, uh, my buddy's teaching a class at UW, and if you wanted to take it, uh, he owes me a favor. I'll get you for free. And I go, ah, I'm good, thanks. And he goes, well, what else are you doing this weekend? And I went, I guess I'll do it. And then he tried to talk me out of it for a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> he immediately recognized his mistake and went, no, don't do it. Whatever you do, don't do it. Um, <laughs> So now you grew up in uh, the Seattle area, is that yep, correct? Where'd you go to school? Yield Ballard. I uh, went to high school at Nathan Hale High School. Oh, the mean streets of Ballard. I know. Mm. It was rough. It yeah. was rough. Yes, that's yeah. a very tough neighborhood Always over there. Always scary. <laughs> Always scary. Three yeah. mile an hour drive-bys. Um, <laughs> With the left blinker. Yeah, left, yeah exactly. <laughs> you got to watch out for those yeah. left blinkers. Yeah, that always tells you where, you're, where they're going to shoot out of. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so now you go to this class and then you decide, well, this might be for me. Let's give this a shot. And then did you do I assumed you did some of the local clubs like the underground and yeah. uh, and well my first show was uh, I didn't have a choice um, was at Giggles Comedy Club in Seattle which uh, just changed ownership um, and uh, and then I started working more at the underground the underground kind of became my home club and still is I, I love the underground Under, the underground and laughs out in, uh, in Kirkland are two, two of my favorite clubs here in the in the Northwest um, and worked there a bunch and kind of did everything I could do in Seattle. Uh, kind of a funny story. I opened for my dad. He tried to talk me out of this for a year and a half. <laughs> and then at one point he saw me do well and he goes, all right, I guess you're going to do this. And I was opening for my dad and uh, I was about to feature. And, and the MC is on stage at the underground. And he's bringing me up. He's doing my intro. And my dad comes and puts his arm around me. And uh, he, he goes, uh, oh, son, I've been doing this 30 years. And I got a little piece of advice. And I go, yeah, yeah. What is it? What is it? I got to go. You know? <laughs> and he goes, listen, I've learned a lot of things. And I just want to give you one piece of advice. And he goes, uh, don't screw up. Makes me look bad. Go get him, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, and that's good advice. You that is good you advice. Know, think about whenever anything's gone wrong, what have you done just beforehand? Yeah, screwed up. Screwed up. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Sage exactly. wisdom yeah. from a veteran. Absolutely. <laughs> right. And it makes him look bad, and he's his whole ni his yeah. name's writing on it, and that's his check, exactly. which eventually yeah. is your uh, your heritage. My, uh, my <laughs> theory was always that he changed his name because he was disappointed in me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to go by Elliot Max. <laughs> this kid's doing nothing with his life. <laughs> now, tell me about moving to New York. That was about four years ago, you said? Yeah, yeah. It was about four years ago. I moved to New York City with my girlfriend, who's a doctor. I win. Um, yeah. I, uh, who's uh, wonderful. Um, we moved out to New York City, which is a scary move because we didn't have any money or uh, any real reason to be there. And I didn't really get on stage for about eight months. And um, uh, things have snowballed and gotten really exciting. And 
next month will be headlining at Caroline's on Broadway, which oh, is one beautiful. of the best clubs in the country. So absolutely. It's been it's been a great experience and it's taught me a lot and it's it's just been absolutely fun. And it's a fun city. You get to see your name up on the uh, up on the, yeah, up on the breeder board. Yeah, take a picture of that. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> exciting. It's, well, let me throw some dates uh, people's way because uh, you guys have some shows coming up locally that everybody can go to, and I highly recommend it. Uh, right here in Tacoma, the Taste of Tacoma, they have the uh, 96.5 Jack FM Comedy Club. 